Okay, going to do a video refuting some of the blatant scripture twisting and lies and deception of King's Table, Frankie Boy over at Satan's Table, Devil's Table, or whatever you want to call him, and how he blatantly misuses scripture and basically he just rambles on without giving any verses of scripture to prove his, to basically try to prove his heresy that salvation is always the same in every dispensation, typical non dispensational heresy. And going to go full screen now. But what he does is that basically uh, he, he's going through a video by Aaron Aaron Deering, which of course I've had my beef with Aaron Deering, but uh, Aaron Deering is right when it comes to dispensations. And King's Table and Ed Fenning and these other guys they hold a, they hold a fault to a false uh, type of dispensationalism. The dispensationalism that King's Table, Ed Fenning, or Ed Faking, or Pale Eddie, whatever you want to call them, they hold to they hold to a false dispensation. They hold to a, 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 a phony false dispensationalism. Their dispensationalism is not the true dispensationalism, and of course they'll call you Ruckmanite and that kind of stuff and hyper dispensationalist, which shows their ignorance because really they're the ones that are the hyper dispensationalists because they're the ones who are taking Romans 10 or Romans chapters 9 through 11 and trying to make that for the Jews, and really that is hyper dispensationalism. So I could go off about that for a while, but I'm not going to go off topic, obviously. But the bottom line is, is that they'll lie about you, they'll call you a hyper dispensationalist, when really they're the ones who are the hyper dispensationalists. They'll call you Ruckmanite, they'll call you this and that. But really, they're the ones who hold to a false view of dispensationalism. And uh, basically, King's Table, he blatantly lies. And it's funny, because you're going to notice in the video, he answers uh, Aaron's claims, but he just he doesn't give any scripture. He just, just supposed to just basically believe him as he says it, basically. That's what it comes down to. He says a bunch of stuff as if it's biblical, but doesn't give any book, chapter, and verse to back it up. So he just goes on, and you're just supposed to believe what he says, because he said it, basically. Okay, let's watch this. And that's why I see just a little side note. That's why I do say there is not much difference between the Fenningerite cult and the Denlinger cult. Yeah, Aaron. Let me just actually turn the volume up a little bit. To be. Let's go back a little bit as well. Because, just to get some context. And then go with that, so. Uh, but I'll continue on here with this. Yeah, Aaron. Could it be that the king was lost and that he was never saved? <laughs> he's, he's basically going through, uh, because Aaron is basically going through Ed's channel, and then King Stable is doing a video attacking Aaron on that, and Aaron correctly points out that Ed Fenninger's heresy of salvation is always, there's an eternal security in every dispensation. You know, Ed's f uh, false view of dispensationalism. Pale Eddie, basically, you got Frankie Boy, Devil's Devil's Table, going uh, basically twisting scripture to try to answer Aaron Deering. Eternal security in every dispensation. There's eternal security in every dispensation if you believe. That's it. All right. If you believe the true God, that was that was your eternal security. The rich man didn't believe. Uh, can I get a book, chapter, and verse for that? You see, there's eternal security in every dispensation if you just believe the one true God. Notice how he didn't give any book, chapter, and verse to back it up. And you're going to see as I keep playing it, he doesn't give any scripture. You're supposed to just basically believe him as he says it without looking to the scriptures. You're supposed to believe the one true God, and that was your eternal security. Uh, book, chapter, and verse, please. It's not in there. You see, just like any Catholic priest out there, you just have to just listen to what he says and just take what he says and whatever. You're supposed to just believe him as he says it. Because there's no scripture that just says, oh, if you just believe the one true God, that's your eternal security. Not one verse of scripture to back that up. You see, false prophets, and you know, again, I'm not a follower of Denlinger, but he did bring up a good point. False prophets will always, they'll never tell you to look in your Bibles. They'll never say to, hey, turn your Bible to book, you know, they'll, they'll never say, oh, it's over there. Actually, no, they'll never say, got one right here. They'll never say, go to your Bibles and turn to, you know, book chapter and verse. They'll never do that because they want the authority to be on themselves, not to the scriptures. That's why he'll just go on and ramble, but never give any scripture. You just have to listen to him and just believe what he says because he said it. Let's continue. Oh, well. <laughs> you know what? Exactly. No one knows who was saved. Uh, with this story, you kind of know who is. because. Okay, first of all, nobody was saved in the Old Testament in the sense of 
having their sins washed away by Jesus Christ. Nobody was saved back then. They were they had their sins covered by the animal sacrifices, but they were not totally forgiven. That's why they went down to Abraham's bosom. Okay? They went down to Abraham's bosom and slept with their fathers. They were not they were not saved in the Old Testament. Which again, these it's funny these 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 um, jokers over at the Fending Right cult, they claim to be dispensationalists, yet they're just you know, parroting non-dispensational heresies. Oh, they're saved in the Old Testament. No, they weren't. But yet these non-dispensational jokers over the Fending Right cult can't see that. Pale Eddie, Frankie Boy, can't see it. Why? Because they don't have the spirit of truth inside of them. And again, I'm not, I don't want to be this kind of person where I just declare everybody lost that doesn't believe like me. No. The scriptures are the final standard. I'm not the final standard. I'm not even a Bible teacher. I just make videos. That's all I do. Okay? But basically... When you're getting into some kind of doctrine, like, like the reason why I say King Stephen was lost is not because oh he oh I, he, oh he, he disagrees with you that's why you call him lost no, because he denies calling upon the name of the Lord for salvation that's why he's lost not because he di you can disagree with me okay, whatever, but when you deny prayer for salvation, you're lost okay you're denying the gospel that's why I call him lost, and let it be a curse according to Galatians chapter one verses eight to nine, he's preaching a false gospel, that's why I am being a little bit harsh because he's a lying deceitful devil. He's he's a liar, and it's not it's not when you're dealing with when you're dealing with a brother. You see, you're supposed to you should obviously be meek and, and you know mild with them, but when you're dealing with a false devil like this guy who who has been admonished and reproved many times, taking the gloves off. It's time to basically take the gloves off, essentially. So, continuing. The poor man and then the rich man. Uh, but. The rich man wasn't saved because he didn't. He wasn't a believer. Is is that so hard to believe that a rich king would not be a would not be a believer? That he would have put his faith and trust in his money and his own. Uh, well, Solomon was the richest man on earth, essentially, and he was he he believed in God. Re, why don't you go read the Book of Kings sometime? First Kings. See again, he does not give any scripture to back this up. It's just all his words. Own stuff. Luke chapter 16. And he'd be held accountable morality wise. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Edward. Why did Locke go to heaven if works were necessary to save? The ending of Lot is he slept with his two daughters. <laughs> and uh, he was drunk. That was the ending of Lot. That okay, so the exception overthrows the rule, apparently. See, this is what these, these heretics always like to do, these non-dispensational jokers over at the Fenning Right Call. They always like to use the exception to overthrow the rule. It's ridiculous. This is not. This is, this is what cults always do. That we know of, you know? That's, it's sad with these people. I believe verses 19 through 26. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of souls, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his souls. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, now watch, after Aaron reads these scriptures, King's Table totally lies and deceives his audience and totally detracts from the point. Watch watch what he does. Watch this. In hell he left his he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But I pause here right for a second. Why? Because verse twenty four. He said, Father Abraham. Did it? Yeah. He would have definitely known who Father Abraham was after he died, right? <laughs> um, where in Scripture does it say that people are confessing Abraham when they go to hell or they know about Abraham when they're in hell? See, again, you're just supposed to take what he says without, without looking at it in the Scriptures. Again, book, chapter, oops, hit my mic there. See, book, chapter, and verse, please, for, oh, when you go to, when you go to hell, you're going to now know who Abraham is. Now, you will believe in God. There's obviously no atheist in hell. There's not a single atheist who's in hell right now. You see, when atheists go to hell, they believe there's a God now. They believe in, in Jesus Christ now, obviously. They believe he's God now. But where does it say they're saying they're confessing Abraham, saying Father Abraham? He's not he's not showing the scriptures just like any false just like any false prophet does. Any false teacher will do. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Clearly, the rich man didn't believe. It, it's just, it's just that simple. And now, being and it gets back to the point where in scripture do you have to just believe God to have your eternal security? He just rambling on and on, but not giving any scripture. In hell, people who die and go to hell now, and they didn't believe in Christ, they will believe in Christ. My cat. <laughs> They are believing Christ right now. That's not going to save them. They had their Okay, no, notice something. Notice how he totally detracted from the point. Notice how Aaron brought up how he's confessing Father Abraham. Okay? See, before Jesus Christ died on the cross, they were not saved by faith in Jesus Christ. The, the New Testament did not begin until after the death of Jesus Christ. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 to uh, verses Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 to 18. Okay? So notice how Aaron's point was that that he's confessing Father Abraham, okay? He's not confessing Jesus Christ. But notice how King's Table, Devil's Table, totally detracts from that and says, makes it all about Jesus Christ, basically. He's a liar. He's deceiving his audience. He's totally distracting from the main point. He's trying to set up a straw man argument, essentially. Your time, you know, you've gotta, you've gotta believe while you're still alive. So just because you now realize, oh, wow, uh, yeah, it was true. What what was true? Huh? The gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection before Jesus Christ died on the cross? Okay. Uh, and of course, he'll probably say, well, I wasn't saying that. Well, again, the whole point was, was that he's confessing Abraham. So, obviously, the rich man was Jewish, father Abraham, Abraham's his physical father, and he believed in Abraham. Okay. This is keep in mind. This is before Jesus Christ died on the cross, so they were not believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But again, notice how King's Table, Devil's Table, totally detracted from that and made it all about believing on Jesus Christ. When the point was is that the rich man was obviously, obviously, trying to keep the law. He obviously was saved in the sense of he was a Jew, basically, and he believes in Abraham. He was not like an unbeliever, like King's Table implied. Oh, he didn't believe. Yes, he did believe. But then he detracts from the point and says. Oh, but, you know, they believe in Jesus Christ. That wasn't the whole point. It was about he was confessing Abraham, showing that he did believe, and he basically essentially lost his salvation. See, this is what liars do. They'll detract from the point, they'll set up straw man arguments, and then they won't take it to the scriptures. They won't say, hey, turn, turn in your Bibles to, you know, the book of, of Luke, chapter 18, verses, beginning at verse 19. They won't, they won't do that, because... They want to set themselves up as the final authority, which is what, ironically, he accuses me of. And yeah, I am being kind of harsh, because again, he's a false teacher. He's a false prophet, okay? And in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, let him be accursed, okay? You know what accursed means, right? If you look at the definition of accursed, it basically means, like, you're doomed, essentially. So why am I going to be nice and, and calm towards a false teacher? A false prophet teaching a false gospel, trying to deny prayer for salvation. It's not happening. Okay, if you can't take that, then that's a bit of a problem. Not saying you're lost. Okay, I'm not going to call you lost. I'm saying that rebuking a false prophet, harshly rebuking a false teacher, is correct in scripture. There's nothing wrong about that. When you're talking to a saved brother, you should obviously be meek towards him. But this is not a brother. He's lost. He's an unsaved devil. That doesn't save you. <laughs> Too late. You had your chance. That's what the scriptures are saying. See, this is what I mean. These guys... That's what the scriptures are saying. Um, book, chapter, and verse, please. He doesn't quote one. He doesn't give any scripture. That's what the scriptures say. Okay, where, where, where? What scripture? He doesn't give any. They do not really read the scriptures. They just don't read it. And then, on top of that, they have got poor, poor teachers teaching these people, like, Oh man, and I wonder what what Brian thinks of his dress up, uh, you know, Catholic outfit that he has on there. <laughs> or not Catholic. Uh, oh man. Yeah, that Baptist outfit that he has on. <laughs> but yeah, the rich man will very fast realize now after he died and he's being tormented in the flames and he sees Abraham and he, and he he probably heard about it I have no doubt he heard about it 
And oh, oh, he probably heard about it. I have no doubt he heard about it. Um, again, where's the scripture at? He doesn't give any scripture. Oh, I probably heard about it. It might be in there. I don't know. It's all just his opinions. It's, it's not. He's not saying to the people, turn in your Bibles to... I don't know, I keep repeating this point, but he's not saying turn your Bibles to book, chapter, verse. It's all just his opinions. It might be there, and maybe it happened, I just don't know. He's not He's not telling you, he's not turning to the scriptures, he's turning you to himself. Again, he's just rambling on and on and on, and you're supposed to just believe him, believe what he says, essentially. Just believe it because he said it. Oops. Now it's just too late, just like everybody else. But had he believed, he would have been saved. Just that simple. Wait a second, you just contradicted yourself. He might have believed, but then, I don't know, but had he believed, he might have been saved. Wait a second, if he might have believed, but then went to hell, that would mean if he did believe, he lost his salvation, or he didn't believe. Which is it, Frank? He's contradicting himself and doesn't even realize it. This man was of the faith of Abraham, the second dispensation. No, he... Just like even the, the Pharisees and stuff like that thought that they were of the faith of Abraham, but clearly they weren't because they added works like you guys do. You know, that they're work. Um, no, because Jesus Christ, when he came, was brought in a new, a new dispensation. Let me show you a scripture on that. You see, I'm actually going to turn you to the word of God, not just ramble on and on and on. And, just, and expect you to just listen to what I say. Uh, John chapter 1, verse number uh, 14. Actually, no. Uh, Sorry, John chapter 1, verse number 17, okay? Here's a scripture he will not he won't show you. John 1, 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ brought in a new dispensation. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. This is actually a good passage or good dispensational proof text. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Okay? So, King Shab was lying and just not showing you the scriptures. He just... It's all just his words, which is funny because he just he accuses other people of that. And he, he like he accused me of that when I was bringing out government documents and whatever. It's like it's just ridiculous. But on this thing of uh, works in the Old Testament, here's actually a really good verse showing. Uh, sorry, it wasn't Matthew, it wasn't sorry it wasn't Matthew chapter ten. Sorry, I, I got my, got my verses mixed up. Here's an interesting verse showing uh, works in the Old Testament. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 14 verse number 14 though these though these three men Noah Daniel and Job were in it they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness righteousness saith the Lord God deliver your own souls by your righteousness hmm what does it mean by your righteousness well let's see what this righteousness was Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 24 25 and the Lord commanded us to do all all these statutes to fear Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day and it shall be our I guess our righteousness if we should if we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us so keeping the law is self-righteousness and when they're saving their souls preserving their souls by their righteousness through, through the law that, that's why Paul says in Romans chapter 3 verses verses uh, 28 and other scriptures that you're not saved by the works of the law. Why would Paul have to mention you're not saved by the works of the law if they, were, if they never were saved by keeping the law? Because they were saved by keeping the law um, and Paul was telling them that that's not the case anymore. And a good proof text on that, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 5. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, but the man which doeth those things shall, shall live by them. Righteousness which is of the law. Okay? Paul is having to explain to the Romans. For example, he says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Look at this. End of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. What was the righteousness before Christ? The law. Okay? Then Christ put an end to the law. He fulfilled the law. Okay? Read about that in Luke chapter uh, 24, verses 44 to 47. And now, righteousness is no longer by the law. Because again, the law is self-righteousness according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 and 25. So that's some scriptures that King's Table will not show you. But there's some other good scriptures too. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 3. Here's a, here's a really good one. They just they, they really can't answer it. They try to answer it, but they just, they're just they just not able to because it blatantly contradicts their heresy. Uh, where is it? Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 to 21. When I say unto the wicked, that thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. 
Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Notice something here. And he turn not from his wickedness, nor his wicked way. What's the result? He dies in his iniquity. So he has actually turned from his evil ways, works, according to, to uh, Jonah 3.10. Because you know, turning from sin and living holy is works, according to Jonah 3.10. And what's the result if he doesn't do that? He dies in his iniquity. What does he mean when you die in your iniquity? You go to hell. So they're saved by faith in the Old Testament? Faith alone? I don't think so. Look at verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will require thine hand. So now you have a righteous man here, who is living righteously, and he turns from that righteousness, and what happens? He dies in his sin. And again, what does it mean to die in your sin? You go to hell. Uh, verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned, and thou hast delivered thy soul. Okay? So you're delivering your soul because you're warning. You're busy warning because you're, that's how you deliver your soul. So they're saved by faith in the Old Testament. I don't think so. Ezekiel, oh, sorry, not Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18, uh, beginning at verse 24. But when a righteous, when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to the, all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he, has, he hath trespassed and in his sin that he hath sinned. In them shall he die. So again, a righteous man who's doing righteous living, he turns from that righteous living, and commits sin, and he dies in his sin as a result. Verse 25, Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are, you, are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. Again, when a, when a wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, look at this, he shall save his soul alive. Kind of makes a problem for your physical salvation stupid argument that the pale eddy followers and the fending rights and the frankie boy from king's table like to use oh this is about physical salvation he shall save his soul alive in verse 27 he's saving his soul it's not talking about physical salvation which no such term appears in scripture uh yeah but that's those are, those are the couple scriptures i wanted to cover there's a bunch of others too uh like leviticus 16 the whole chapter proves that the animal sacrifices were in fact uh, needed to cover your sins. They weren't just symbolic or something like the non-dispensational heretics will claim. So, anyway, don't be deceived by King's Table, Devil's Table, Frankie Boy, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he's a liar, he's a deceiver, and he's blatantly twisting scripture and just basically rambling on and on and on about this, about, because he doesn't quote scripture, but then when he does, he just twists it, obviously. But then he's just rambling on and on and on and doesn't tell you to actually to, to look in your Bibles, to hey, turn to, you know, book, chapter, and verse. He doesn't do, he doesn't do that. you just so, supposed to take his words because he said it, basically. So, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.